Let's get more on this story. We're joined by Mark Garnett, lecturer in British politics at Lancaster University. Mark, good to talk to you again. So let's start with the next few hours and days. Uh, Theresa May expected to announce her cabinet. Do we have any inkling as to what that is going to look like? There has been a promise that there will be more women at least. Yes, uh, I'm certain that there are candidates who she will have her eye on as possible uh, people to be promoted within the cabinet. Um, there's uh, people like Nicky Morgan, the Education Secretary, people like Theresa Villiers, uh, Northern Ireland Secretary. They're people who p perhaps could be moved to slightly more important points, uh, posts. There's also Andrea Leadsom, who was uh, Mrs. May's rival in the leadership uh, contest until she withdrew. There'll be some uh, pressure, I think, on Mrs. May to put her in the cabinet. But I think the idea generally will be that Mrs. May will want a better gender balance in this cabinet. It wasn't perhaps a great feature of Mr. Cameron's cabinet, so I think it will be more of a priority for Mrs. May. She is in a slightly tricky. Uh, beyond that, uh, a real. Sorry. Sorry, go I'm on. sorry, I was just going to go on to say yeah, that there on, are Mark. big dilemmas for her. There are big dilemmas for her uh, with uh, people like George Osborne, the Chancellor. His position seems to be under threat. Uh, also, what to do about people like Boris Johnson, who caused such a, uh, a large amount of publicity for himself during the, ref the referendum campaign. People like that. It's very, very difficult to know how she's going to deal with these people. But if anyone can deal with these issues. I think Mrs May will have been thinking very carefully and I think she'll come out with a balanced cabinet. Now she of course campaigned for Britain to remain in the EU but Brexit of course she says is going to happen. How do you think she's going to reconcile her personal views with the results of the referendum? Mrs May is somebody who doesn't really take decisions unless she's thought about them very carefully. And of course, she was in the end uh, rather reluctantly, it seems, a uh, supporter of Remain. That suggests to me that she did weigh things up very, very carefully and came down on one side. And what's happened since then to change her mind is that the British public narrowly voted in favour of Brexit. I think she's a kind of politician who will be able to reconcile these two things. Because it was a narrow decision for her to be in favour of Remain, she's quite capable, I think, of. Uh, of adding to that the, uh, the piece of information provided by the British electorate that they are narrowly in favour of leaving. And that means that she will, I think, carry forward the idea that the purpose the, the British people would like the government to negotiate a Brexit and she's prepared to enter those negotiations in very good faith. Of course, she's also at the mercy of events and the negotiations will be very very difficult things might happen to the British economy which make it less advisable for Britain to leave the EU I think Mrs May is a kind of person who can adapt to any new situation as it develops uh, well you indeed seem to be a big fan uh, how do you think people in Britain uh, view her because she's basically pretty much been put in front of them they've had no choice in in choosing her Exactly. This is a, a, a big problem for Mrs May. She's on record as having criticised Gordon Brown, the last Labour Prime Minister, who uh, arose in kind of similar circumstances without a vote either of his party or of the public. So there's pressure to have a general election, but Mrs May would find it very difficult to call one because of recent changes to the way the British Constitution uh, operates. Um, the public opinion does seem to have be favourable towards Mrs May. All the polling before she became leader suggested she was far and away the most popular of the candidates. British leaders always begin with some kind of what we call a honeymoon period where they're popular. That's the period where Mrs May has to take decisions which will mean that her popularity doesn't disappear overnight. Uh, once again, I think that she isn't the kind of person who wants cheap popularity. She, tends to want to rest on her record rather than any image. And uh, this is the kind of thing that will be put to the test in uh, days to come because clearly the media is going to be looking at her very closely now, really for the first time in her career. OK, thank you for that. Mark Garnett there, lecturer in British politics at Lancaster University. Many thanks.